Hey everyone, it is time to work on this Asteroids cocktail table. That's falling apart. Uh, this is the $60 pickup. We're gonna go through this. I have a ratchet strap holding it because I decided to look at the board, but I had the twine holding it together that I needed to cut. So I'm going to slowly release this ratchet strap and hopefully it doesn't all fall apart on me. I hope. Uh, we've got a lot of cleaning up to do. This thing is filthy. Um, I think they even had duct tape holding it together at one point. And some cleanup to do. But I don't think this is anything that we, we can't manage to get done. So uh, let's see if we can, what we can make of this. Sound good? All right, let's release this ratchet slap strap slowly and hope nothing breaks maybe there we go all right a little more a little more too much all right we're gonna leave it just like that for now All right, let's take a look inside. So inside we do have some paperwork. We've got uh, some schematics here. Let's see. Ah, more schematics for the vector generator. We can open that up later. And we have a manual. Ah, most of my games don't have these inside. It even has a warranty card. I think it's still good. <laughs> Everything's there. All right. Oh, that's good. Let's take a look here. So that's how it's supposed to open. All right. Okay. Let's let's see what it does, if anything. Oh, so here's the board. My, I'm not optimistic at all. Um, we've got some wires coming off of this kit here. Um, this kit looks like some sort of bootleg speed mod or probably not a save kit is my guess. And this thing is corroded. Uh, things are just turning green on it in a lot of places. I'll pull the board out, but I'll turn it on first because uh, my, I'm betting this is not going to work. But, you know, maybe we'll get some sign of life. And I'll take that. So here we have our monitor. And there's a light over here that may come on. I'm expecting it to come on if the monitor works. This is called the spot killer. And basically, if we don't get a good signal coming off of the board down here, it's going to turn the spot killer on so that it, the monitor is not getting damaged because this is indeed a black and white vector monitor. Um, what I might do real quick before I do turn this on is uh, I'm going to check my fuses. So to check my fuses on my multimeter, I'll turn it on and I'm looking for continuity here which is that you know kind of speaker looking symbol. I'm just going to change it over to that. So what that will do, and I'll put this down here, is if we take a probe on our meter, we touch them together, we've got continuity or a solid connection. So I'm just going to come in and check everything real quick. Good. 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 So all our fuses are good. I can see a couple fuses up in the monitor. Let's see if I can get a good angle and we'll check those. So I know it's super dark in here, but we've got three fuses. One, two, and three. And we'll check those real quick. They look good to me. I can actually get Okay. 
good. Okay, so all our fuses are good on our monitor. Uh, let, let's supply some uh, power and see what happens. So before I applied power, I do know that this interlock switch is stuck in. So if I get no AC, I'm betting I've got an issue here with my interlock switch. And uh, it looks it looks a little loose in there and whatever else. So we'll, we'll take a look at that if we don't get power. But we'll turn it on and see what happens. Because normally those interlock switches pop out when the door is open. All right, here we go. Power switch is, well, it's on the bottom of the cabinet, but it's over here, down there. It's my creepy finger pointing down, so let's turn this on. Maybe. Ooh, garbage. I hear noise from the speaker. Let's see, so spot killer's on. We're gonna shut this off. Ooh, God, that's a horrible noise. And we've got five volts, it looks like. So I'm gonna shut this off. Maybe. Man, that was a horrible noise. All right. Well, let's pull this board out and we'll look at it. All right, so first thing I'm going to undo here is my edge connector. Take that off. I got a couple screws here. And a little spacer we'll pull out. And then over here, it looks like we've got another one. this out another space here under and <laughs> and the block of wood that's not attached that's fine all right and then this should slide out all right let's go take a look at that all right, so here's the Asteroids PCB. I am feeling okay, not about this board, but I'm feeling okay about this because we had a spot killer come on and the fuses were good on the monitor. So at least the deflection board is working and maybe we have high voltage and maybe it'll work. But let's take a look at this. So as you can see, this is some aftermarket thing. And if you look close here, see all that green stuff? On that chip there, that's corrosion. And this board is dusty. It must have been, you know, near the ocean or near a lake or in a basement. That was very damp. But you can see we've got a lot of leads soldered on here that come over to this kit. And this wire is off. And it looks like it's supposed to be somewhere in here, but I don't know where. And, hey, geez, even if you look some of these transistors here there's green on them and you know let's see we've got this is our processor tier our, our CPU our 6502 and that's got some corrosion in it as well and these have corrosion on them so I'm not surprised that this thing is not working to be honest but uh I mean it's Looks original, minus this little fancy add-on. Let's take a look at the back side here. Okay, so it looks like some work has been done over here. Um, probably where some of that kit was soldered on to. I'll have to look. Maybe not, though. Everything else looks pretty clean here on the back side, which is good. The corrosion's not going entirely through. Oh, okay. So that, where we saw the soldering, is where this kit was installed. So they probably, okay, let's see if we can look underneath here. So they removed a chip there and put in a socket so that they could put this kit in. That would be why. 
Okay. <sighs> well, this board, we're not going to touch this board. I've already gone ahead and, let's see, I've ordered the high score save kit, and I actually got another board in. Let's pull the other board out. So here's our other board. Got this from our friend Andrew B. On Clav and some of the other forums. Uh, he's, you know, regional to me here in New England, so this was pretty quick to get. So he's gone through this board and has said it is tested and working. And so what I'm going to end up doing is we did an exchange here where he sends me a working board for a price, and then I'm going to be sending him my dead board. And I sent him pictures of this and said, hey, this thing's corroded. <laughs> All right. So if we look at this, this is actually a lot cleaner and nicer. It does have a couple repairs on it. There's a nice, you know, looks like a little trace repair here. And otherwise, everything looks nice and clean. Edge looks good and clean. So he says this is working. So we should be good to put this in. One thing he said to do on before we install this is to check our voltage on the AR. So we will do that, but he also said to check the voltage and set it before we put this in. So but then we can determine if we've got any other monitor issues on our Asteroids cocktail that's falling apart. So we've put some light in here so we can see. And we're gonna set this up so we can test our voltage on our power supply here, our AR. So as you can see, somehow, there we go. Here's our AR. We're gonna test our voltage coming off of here. So we need to test the five volts. And Andy is saying that when we test this, we wanna make sure that this is about 6.2 volts without load on these older um, power supplies here, the ARs. So we've got a ground lug here that we're gonna attach an alligator clip to. And we also have our five volt clip over here that we're going to, oh man, that just broke. <laughs> oh well. Well, it's open now. Uh, okay, anyway, and look at this. I has to have my strap holding it, but the strap gave way and the door is falling off. You can see the staples are poking through over here. Oh man. Ouch. Put my knee on this little piece of wood here. Where's the wood? There it is. Anyway, let's get the light back in here. All right, maybe. Okay. So let's try this again. Ground lug here. Five volts. I think behind this glob of glue. We're going to take this glob of glue off. Because that's for our power supply adjustment. All right, yeah, that's plus five volts DC right back there. All right, so we're gonna put an alligator clip on that lug and that lug here and attach it to our multimeter and check it. All right, so our ground lug alligator clip is there. We've got our red lead over there on our five volt line and they are connected to the multimeter. I'm gonna make sure those don't touch. And then we're going to set our multimeter for volts DC, which is the first one, the dash with the dot line. The one with the wave is the AC voltage. So we'll check our voltage. All right, let's turn it on and see what we get for voltage. Nothing. It's dead. It was working, and now it's not. Bet you it's this stupid interlock up here. By the light that you can't see. My interlock switch up here. I think that's a problem. All right, I'll play with that. Maybe we'll get it back on. Look at this interlock. I can barely, I can't even push it in. It's supposed to push in like that, but it barely comes out. This thing's a mess. Let's pull it off. Let's see if I got power. 
No. Nothing. Oh, jeez. It's in all the way. All right. Off. Unplug. All right. We got no AC going in there now. All right. Let's get rid. Let's get rid of that thing. All right. Turn off my multimeter because I don't need that on anymore. Let's see here. Hang that there. All right. Clearly, the strap is doing a whole lot now. Oh man, that thing's in there tight. Won't we'll screw that off camera. Just took off one screw and a little tiny spring fell out of the interlock. What if that's part of a problem? Let's keep digging. So here's our interlock with the cover removed. Let's see if I can get this out. So it just pulls forward like this, I think. Maybe. You can see it falling apart. I don't think it's supposed to fall apart like that. What am I binding on? This whole thing's coming apart. <laughs> Why am I catching it? Let me see if I can figure out without my head in front of the camera. Well, I got it out. Here's part of it. It's falling apart. And the button fell out. Uh, some plastic tab fell out. This black wire here came out. Uh, these, the other ones are still attached to the lugs, kind of, but we'll and pull this out now so we can see what's going on. So as I look at this, uh, it's definitely got some black here on it. And uh, looks like it, it just kind of burnt up, failed. Definitely some black marks in the back there. So these are all the fallen pieces out of this interlock switch here, which is actually a cherry switch, is who they said it's made by. So we will bypass that for now. I don't have another interlock switch that I can think of. So what I'm going to do is we will just tie together the wires. Now basically what an interlock switch does is it's a safety mechanism. So when you open this door that has fallen on me, it will shut the power off to everything inside so that you don't electrocute yourself. And it prevents, you know, if somebody decides to break in what's that location, well, at least you're not gonna get sued for them getting fried. They're not gonna get fried unless they go touch the monitor or something, but they'll definitely get a good buzz. But, so what we'll end up doing is we'll tie together our black wires and we'll tie together our white wires. And <laughs> look, here's parts the mechanism here that's broken inside here and part of the switch yes this is seen much better days and then what we'll do at some point is go ahead and replace the interlock switch maybe we'll see but it's not uncommon for operators to have tied those together to bypass the interlock switch completely it does make it nice though for when you're testing because you can just give it power without having to reach underneath the cabinet so let's go ahead and do that. All right, let's twist these tight wires together so we can use them. Take 
take those off. Strip our ends. My wire stripper uses the Harbor Freight Special. And it's been working well for a few years now. Every now and then you do need to adjust it, but it works. Okay. So make sure that when you do this, if you don't have wire nuts or some other way to protect this, you wrap these good in electrical tape. I'm gonna use a wire nut for this. Maybe. Clearly I didn't twist them together well enough. Might need to strip off a little bit more to make this work with this wire nut. I think the wire nut I've got is just a little bit too big, but we can make it work. Need to be long enough when you twist it together. That wire nut. Okay. All right. And helpful tip if you've never dealt with wire nuts before, uh, to do a tighten things, go clockwise. I remember the first time I did this, for some odd reason, I went backwards and counterclockwise. It made my life. A little hard. I was like, why are these wire nuts not working? Oh wait, because you did it wrong, Tim. All right, there's the first one. Let's go ahead and do the second one. And make sure you're doing this with the power off, obviously, unless you like to have a good time. You want an electrifying time, perhaps. Oh man, that, what kind of twist was that, Tim? What are you doing? I know what it is. It's lunchtime. I'm hungry. All right. All right, tug, we're good. Nothing's coming off. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and do one thing I've seen people do is you can also wrap this in electrical tape if you're concerned about it. That's fine to do. Uh, for now, what we're going to do is test our voltage, see if we get power. All right, so what started off as a simple let's just check the voltage ended up not being simple because we had to get rid of the interlock because it was falling apart. So we've twist tied everything together, twist tied, wire nut everything together. You guys know what I mean. And now we are going to turn it on and then check our voltage and now when I was talking with Andy B he said that we should be about 6.2 on the AR here the power supply with no load on these earlier asteroids models and then when we apply load to this using the uh, asteroids board it should come in around 5 I mean, he actually he said to go just under 5 so like 4.95 to 5 that way you're not stressing everything out on these old boards. So let's turn it on and see where we're at. All right, so we've got about 6.28 DC volts. We've got everything connected to our multimeter. We're gonna, I'm gonna see if I can dial it down a little bit using this adjustment knob over here. That's going up, I'm gonna go down. 6.23, 6.22, a little more. You can hear the audio hum too. All right, 6.2. 
I'm gonna plug in the bad board and we'll test voltage on that before we plug in the new board. So one reason I like Atari boards is because they actually put lugs on the boards for you to test your voltages. So we're gonna go ahead and we'll take our red alligator clip. I'm going to put it on our five volt lug and I'll show you where that is. And we'll also put the black one on the ground. So let's, let's do that. So here's our edge, just to give you a point of reference. We'll come over here and this says plus five volts right there. So we'll just take alligator clip and clip it on right there. We're gonna do the same thing with our ground. So if you look, we've got other lugs here, like coin, start, things like that. But we want a ground lug. So here's our ground lug. We'll go ahead and put a lug there. And then we'll go plug this in and test our voltage and dial it in to just under five volts. And then we'll plug in our good working board. All right, so we're gonna test the voltage now. Remember, you don't need to use these alligator clips, but they do make your life a lot easier when you are testing voltages, especially in this case for when I'm filming this, but we've got our lugs on. Normally I just put our, my multimeter probe in. One other way you can test voltage on a board if it doesn't have these lugs is check the corner pins on a chip. I just do the opposite diagonal corners and if you don't get anything, swap corners and you should be getting close to five volts. That will let you know if you're getting five volts on the board. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on and remember, it does make that god awful noise when we turned it on last time. So uh, here we go. All right, so 4.77, so I'm gonna turn it up a little bit and then we'll really dial it in on the other board. So, can I get it to like, I'll start with 4.85. I don't want to be too high on that other board because it did dial this, other, this AR down. And I don't know what's going on with this board. So, we'll start there. Let's put the other board in and see what happens. So let's go ahead and put our lugs on. Here's my ground lug. We'll do my five volt lug. This board is so much cleaner and easier to read. All right, we are good. Let's turn it on. Keep our fingers crossed, watch our voltage. Okay, so we're at 4.96. I think that he said that's an okay range to me. And look in my, let me show you in here. My spot killer is indeed off. Normally, this light right in here is on. It is indeed off. Do I have a picture yet? No, no picture. Let's wait a minute. Maybe it'll warm up. Maybe it'll come on. But that's good. So I might turn it up, let's see. I'll double check my email from him and see what he said. But we are at 4.96. Sounds good to me. So I've got 4.98 volts are dialed it into. No specular and I can hear it. You're playing. I turn and started a game. But nothing on the picture. But I thought this was now yeah, we'll see. Maybe something in the high voltage. But we'll take a look and see what's going on. Maybe I'll wiggle some wires too and hope for the best, because this thing is corroded. But this is a good sign of success. So I had no high voltage on the monitor. You felt no static or anything when I put my hand up to it. So I'm expecting it's something to do with the high voltage on this vector monitor. And I will be the first person to tell you I don't know a lot about vector monitors. And I feel like when I tested this at one point, I did have high voltage, but it's been a while. Because I'm not gonna lie, I did turn this thing on prior to, uh, you know, this video. But what I'm going to do, since I don't have any parts, is I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to reflow a bunch of the solder on the back. And hopefully it's just something like a cold solder joint that uh, 
is causing the problem. So here's the back side of the high voltage cage of this GO5 vector monitor black and white. We'll go through and we'll reflow the headers and some other parts that may be looking suspicious and hopefully that cures the problem. Maybe. We'll see. But I don't have any other parts to replace anyway. So if a transistor is bad, uh, that's too bad. But I'll do that after. I'll test those after if this doesn't work. So to reflow things as far as cold solder joints go, you just come in with some solder and you go through and you heat it up. You put a little bit more solder in. I go to the next one. We're just trying to make sure that we've got good connections on everything. I'll do this for a bunch of these solder joints here. But you guys get the idea. I must I always start with the headers because that's what moves around a lot. So we have success. This is good. So I reflowed all the solder on the back of the high voltage cage, but I don't actually think that was the problem. I was really pushing hard on this connector right here. And then I saw the neck start to heat up and glow. So um, my guess is that connector has got some corrosion on it. And I did notice that there was a pin loose in it as well. So that was the problem. So success, we now have a working vector monitor and this looks like it is ready to go. So now I'm going to put it back together and I need to now, I'm going to leave the monitor out I think for now, take the board out and then I got to glue and staple that bottom in before it just all falls apart on me. As you guys can see it's separating over here and it's separating over there and even when you close this door it just doesn't even line up anymore. So that is the next step. All right, we've done some cleaning, moved things out of the way. I've done a quick vacuum of the inside and started wiping down the top. We've got some of the sticky stuff off, but not all of it. You guys remember when you could smoke inside? Well, this game remembers when you could smoke inside. This is just brown of, with nicotine, and tar and tobacco and all that great stuff. But all right, so we've done one wipe. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over and we're gonna try to reassemble this bottom piece down here, as you can see, it's separating and separating over here to this piece should be mounting, I th think, into here. And I hope I'm right. If not, it goes into, yeah, it definitely goes in there because I can feel the T molding going all the way around here. So we're going to flip this over on its top, get out the glue, get out the staples and hopefully everything lines up. Well, we've got the table upside down and it comes complete. Some 40 year old gum. Maybe it's not 40 years old, but it's loose. That's gross. We'll go ahead and see if we can square this up. As you can see, it's starting to come apart here and here, and this is sitting high and this is sitting high over here and it should be a little more recessed like that. So we'll see if we can line things up a little bit. So now we're looking inside the game. It's upside down. There's all the electronics up there and the monitor would be down there. And if you guys see that gap right in here, let's see, you can see all those nails, or staples kind of just hanging in there. So what I'm thinking, I'm gonna do, let me get this to stay here for a second, or not, there we go. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is come in, I'll run some glue in here, I'll lift this up just a little bit more. I don't wanna pry this off because there are screws holding that backboard on and the back there with the blocking and some up there too where I can see it's separating. So maybe we'll try to squeeze some glue in there and there's more screws over there holding it all in and I'm gonna do the same thing put some glue in that upper rail there and I'll put some more staples and screws in to hold that in 
and uh, maybe put more, a couple more staples on this blocking as well. I hope that works. I really don't want to disassemb disassemble the entire cocktail table, but it could come to that, but I'm going to try to avoid it. All right, let's see what we can do. All right, so I'm using this large bar clamp to hold this open even a little bit more so I can squeeze some glue in there. So we've gone ahead and put glue in here on both sides and hammered it back into location. Let's see. And we can see now that it does have that gap like it's supposed to. I think I need to put a clamp here and kind of square that up. But we'll do that into this, this, this other piece is down. And we'll put a couple more staples in here along the side as well. All right, I'm out of staples that are long enough, so we'll use some brad nails for now and put a couple screws in as well. Of course, I need to fire a nail. Not firing nails. All right, let's fix that. So I've gone ahead and put a big bar clamp going across it with some glue here in the seam because it was starting to separate. So hopefully that stays. And this door now closes, so we're good. And now the next thing we're going to do is drill some pilot holes and put some wood screws in along the side there to hopefully keep this bottom intact. Drill all the pilot holes, now we'll just go ahead and put our screws in. And one more here in the back. So it's been about 24 hours or so since we've done all the gluing and the clamping and the screws. So now we're gonna remove the bar clamp. I've also glued back on that wooden piece that was holding on the PCB or holding it off of the board. So we'll, uh, that's all taken care of. So now that this is all done, we're gonna go flip it over and put everything back together, make sure everything still works. And then we will probably spend a lot of time cleaning this thing. Cause even though I've given it the initial wipe down, it's still a little dirty, but we'll keep going and cleaning it. And then it'll look pretty good when it's all done. So we took the monitor out to work on it but now I'm going to put it back in. Unfortunately, when I took it out, there was only one screw in one of these spots. So there's four screw holes there. And, and it looks like it's seen better days over here in this corner. But we're going to go ahead and drop it in. And then we will, let's see. Yeah, we'll put get another screw for it. The bar clamp's moving. I need to slide it all the way down before it falls down and startles me. <laughs> all right, I'm going to put that monitor in. So the monitor just drops in like this. Just be careful you don't catch it on anything. And it sits in just like that. And it's not super heavy, which is nice. But we gotta go ahead and get a couple more screws for this so it's not sliding all over the place. And I think it was just like that. That's how it looks like it was sitting. put my one screw that I had back in and go look for some more screws. Now as far as our connection goes to this monitor, we only have one connection we need to make. And that's to this round plug, this rust colored plug right here. We'll put that in. And this is the one that was giving us trouble too, so we'll Kind of make sure that everything's in there nice and tight. And if we have more problems, we may, we may need to repin this connector. So while I have the PCB for asteroids out, I did pick up a high score saves kit. Now the reason I picked this up was because when I was going to potentially work on this board here, I knew there was going to be a ton of issues and that eliminates some ROM. So I figured, hey, I'll just get that and do it. But 
Now I've got a working one, so I will put this high score save kit in. Now it comes with, I ordered it, uh, this is the high score save kit, and it comes with, if you want, the uh, another 6502 processor. And if you look here, if you don't know anything about these, let's see if we can get it to focus. All right, 6502, right there on the top line. That's the type of processor it is. And it tells you where it goes, right in here. Now anytime you're looking at these chips, what you wanna do is you wanna look for, there's like a little notch, little half moon thing right there, and that little dot right there means pin one. And that's important to know so you can actually put this chip in the correct direction. If you don't, yeah, you, you could damage the chip and it'll be no good, or you could you know do some other damage in there. But we wanna make sure things go in the correct way. It also came with, uh, I ordered another socket, because I wasn't sure if the other one on mine was going to be bad. And I believe this must be the Revision 2 ROM for um, the high score save that you need to use. And when you're doing that, it goes on the PCB, I'm assuming. That's what that chip is, it's not labeled. Well, it did say it came with it right here. And the way you can check is, if you want Revision 2, it'll actually end in dash 02. And I checked my other one as well. And we've got, oh, you guys can see it. There we go. That O2 there as well. So I think we're good. I don't need to put it in, but if things, and it's required for online high score saving, which I'm not going to do. So to put the high score save kit in, we need to remove the 6502 processor, which is right here. And here's our little half moon orientation, which means pin one is over here. And that's important to note. And so if we're looking at the whole thing as far as where it is, you've got your edge connector here, your vector output section here, you've got your reset button here, that's a button that you can push. And then we have our 6502 that we're going to take out and put in the high score save kit. First thing to do is going to be re to remove the old PCB, or not the old PCB, the old CPU. We're gonna come in here and Gently work this up. You want to make sure that when you're removing any chip with a flat braille laid screwdriver like this that you don't accidentally push it down into here because you could scratch a trace. So you need to be careful on how you remove it. So I'm just going to put it right there, same orientation as it was when I took it out. And then we have, here is a high score save kit. It doesn't have the processor on it. So if you don't order yours with a processor, this is how it comes. And it's marked right here. It says pin one is in this corner. And they kind of show you the little half moons up here as well. So when we put this in, we need to make sure we line up all these pins carefully. And you also want to check to make sure that these pins are all straight. And if they're not straight, you need to make sure they're straight. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time. And then you spend a second here lining this up the best you can. There we go. And then what you do is you take your 6502 and it's going to go back in here. The same way it was going. So there's pin one for the CPU. Now you ask, why am I not using the new one? Well, this is how you guys will probably buy your kit because it doesn't come installed anyway. And I can keep it for the next project. See, that is not going in. And sometimes they can be a pain, and it's fine, you'll make it. There we go. All right. And then if I needed to, I would take out this other chip over here and replace that one. 
if I need to. And you're also going to remember to watch your orientation. So let's go ahead and we'll put it in, fire it up, and see how it does. Hopefully it works. Wrong way. We need to zoom out. There we go. All right, let's go put it in. So we put the board back. It's plugged in. Got the highest score saves kit installed right here. Let's go ahead and we'll turn this on and hopefully it works. I definitely need to pull this glass off though. It's still dirty underneath. Let's see if we can not get a glare. That's, that's a glare. Maybe right here. Nope, glare. God, so much glare. There, now it's dark. Turned off one of the lights. Let's see what happens. If anything, hopefully something. There we go. Something is showing up. All we need now is to focus. Let's see, can I do this better? All right, so it says asteroids. Oh, uh, there's like a vertical collapse. The heck? I didn't have vertical collapse when I tested it the first time. Except I wouldn't call that vertical collapse. It's a horizontal collapse. I fixed it. It's that connector. We gotta fix that connector going to the monitor. I wiggled it around and sure enough it came back. So yeah, we need to fix that. That's not gonna fly. For me, uh, let's see here. All right, so here's setup mode. It says push start to enter setup. So I'm gonna push start, sure. So we have three lives. How do I go down? Oh, okay, so like the rotate buttons go down. Language is English. Free play. Yes. I don't need coins. C message. What does that do? Let's see if I hit that button. None. Arcade. Atari. Atari? I don't know. Wiring. Asteroids. Asteroids Deluxe. No, asteroids. Uh, save scores. Only top three, only top five, or none. How about all of them? Backup scores, like no. Restore scores, no. High score table to default, dip to default. I guess it just like, push start button. Oh, okay, so that just brings us back here. All right, so no, not four lives. I'm going three lives. Free play, English, yep. Ar C message, arcade, Atari. Oh, I guess it'd be high score saves. Atari, asteroids, uh, save all scores. Da, 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 da. Discard, speed test, I don't know what that is. Let's do it. Speed test. Push start button. Okay. Still don't know what it's doing. So I need to. Okay, yep. Yeah. Alright. We'll save this. I guess. Dip saved. Push start button. I don't want to enter setup. Okay, so uh, the hyperspace thing 
button that that brings us out of here. I, I, that those are high scores. I don't have those scores there. How do I get back in here? Can I do so? What about cocktail mode? All right. Will it flip? It did flip. How does it know to do that? Let's check the controls on the other side. They work. Type. Hey, nope. Yeah, that worked. Yeah, all our buttons work. Sweet. We just need to fix that stupid connector. We have success, but I want to... Like, how do I go into this... If I hold down this player one button, will it do anything? I don't know. Let's, let's reset this. Alright, I want to enter set up. And... Three lives. Yes. English. Free play. Uh, high score table to default. High score save what? Where'd it go? What happened? Oh, I had to push the player one button. Push start to Let's go back to setup. So I think arcade was high score save. So I'm gonna change that to just say Atari. Okay. It's raining out. I hear it. It's pouring. Dip saved. Thank you. Push one. There we go. There's some low scores. That's what I want. Low scores. Because those scores before like 30 some odd thousand and yeah. I want low scores so that all my people can be up there. Alright. Cool. So this is good. That was fun. Alright. Let me turn the light back on. See that connector right there? Let's zoom on out, in on it so we can make it feel ashamed. This, this connector right here going to the monitor is going to be the bane of my existence. And I can even see a gap in here. It's like barely holding on. So, and it definitely needs to be repinned. I didn't lose anything either, all right. So we know that both sides should probably be repinned at some point, so. I've done plenty of videos on how to repin a connector, so we'll just save that for another time. But hey, look, we've got a working asteroids board. And, oop, we're zooming out. Zooming out, Tim. We've got a working asteroids board, and we have working asteroids cocktail table. That's dirty, I need to take the glass off because there's like literally stuff inside, but I'll take it. Oh, and I need to get, key for down here for my lock so I can actually use it to keep the door shut. Sound good? I think that's good. Next up I'm going to clean under this glass and to remove the glass you need to remove all four of the glass clips and here are the glass clips and as you can see they're kind of rusty. I think at some point I will probably clean these up and repaint them black but it's not high on the list yet. We're calling it patina. We'll clean them though, so you don't touch it and turn brown. A little dirty. All right, but to get these off, on the bottom side, there are four screws. Just go ahead and we'll take those screws off. Maybe. You know, there we go. They haven't been broken probably in uh, over 40 years. And it was in a moist environment at one point in time. 
So you know it's not coming off easy. That one is. And then because these are stuck on there pretty good, I've been using a you know, paint can opening tool to kind of come in to the gap and give it a little tug. And once you've got a little tug on, you can pull these things off. And as you can see on the inside, they're pretty dirty. And then even on top, it's pretty dirty as well. So we'll take the glass off now and clean it from the underside. So now we're gonna try and take this glass off. I think in theory it should just come off, right? This thing's like stuck. Oh my. Ooh, it's gonna rip it all off. I can see it. Oh no, all right, so here we go. I'm gonna show you right down here. Right down here. See right there? Watch. Oh man, that sucks. So either I take it off and that's cut, that's not, that is staying on the wood grain and that's not the only place it's gonna happen. Or I leave it forever. But it is disgusting underneath this monitor. Like there's stuff growing on it. And I need to, the only way to get to it is through the cocktail glass. <sighs> what do I do? I don't know. Let me think about it. So I've got the top open without the clips and it's literally not going anywhere. But I wanna show you what I tried to do. I'm gonna hold this down here in case if I feel it fall. Maybe it won't, but let me show you what I tried to do. So in here, we got the monitor and inside here is the cardboard bezel that I just pulled out. Right there, there is the cardboard bezel that was wedged in there like that. So that's out. And I was hoping that because there's a piece of plastic right here, that I was hoping I could take it out. But I can't, because it, it is like in there somehow. I was hoping I could like slide it, but it's not sliding enough. And it's feels, uh, feels pretty thick. Like a thicker piece of plexi, I can't bend it out. I think I need to take off the top and I'm going to ruin some of the artwork. I'm hoping I don't ruin a lot of the artwork. I'm hoping that, you know, all the asteroids, you know, the instructions and the name there, don't get ruined. I don't know, we'll see. So in an effort to take this off with the least amount of damage possible, I'm using a plastic Bondo spreading tool here, a little putty knife essentially, and I'm just working it ever so slowly and hoping, and I'm also like pulling uh, on this back side here, you can't see it's off frame, but I'm just working my way around slowly. And I know I'm gonna lose some. I think I can live with it. I mean, I can't, but I'm gonna have to. <sighs> I think we've got it, or mostly. And I can see why I'm losing some of it. Let's see if I can get this up 
here for the second just so you can see it. All right, so there is a gasket here that goes all the way around and uh, that's what your artwork is sticking to. Didn't know they did that, that's actually good to know. But it made all the black artwork stick to that, but hopefully this will stay there and, you know, will survive, it'll look okay. But now I can finally clean this thing. Oof. So the glass is off. We've cleaned it, we were careful. We didn't lose any other artwork, which is good. We can just see we have leftover artwork still stuck to this foam gasket here. Um, but now we're gonna take out this little piece of tinted plexi here and clean that as well. As you can see, there's the monitor. We've already cleaned the monitor, but we'll clean this. Everything will be nice. The top's actually, it doesn't look horrible. That was the glass that was dirty. All right, let's go ahead and clean that. So we've cleaned the plexi. It's actually pretty clean. We're gonna go ahead and put our paper bezel back here like this. Take out any, yeah, you know, cat here. Let's get a cat. And that looks pretty good. And we'll put our plexi back on top. Like this, that's how it was. And now I'm gonna clean the whole top. We've cleaned it, we'll clean it again. And then we'll put the glass back on when it's everything's nice and dry so we don't pull off more artwork. Actually not bad, considering I guess that gasket really did a good job. next clean those and then it'll be fit to come in the house well provided that monitor doesn't keep giving me a hard time So I know it doesn't look like it's cleaner, but it is cleaner. The top's scratched a lot. But when we don't have harsh shop lights shining on it, it should be better. I do need to come over it with like some other sort of heavier duty cleaner because it's like etching and staining in places. And I thought I was being gentle. I was doing a final wipe with my microfiber towel. And the thin lines here on the Atari logo came right off. So everything else stayed. I'm a little bummed about that, um, but it is what it is. I'll live, I suppose. We've got most of the little pieces that came up lined up okay. So, you know, yeah, you can see it, but at least you're not seeing the gray gasket that was around. Like, I'll take it. It was bound to happen when you pull up something that's 40 years old and screened on the back like that, but. I am bummed about those Atari logos, though, because those were in decent shape. So, that's my bad. I was rushing, I think, with that microfiber towel. I did everything nice and gingerly with the paper towel, and then went over for the final pass with the microfiber, and... <sighs> it was too quick. All right. Now it's time to clean up those corner clips, put them back on. I'm not going to paint them in this go-around. We'll leave the patina for now, considering we've got more patina that I created. 
So after we've cleaned up the glass, I actually did go ahead and decide to just kind of give the corner clips some quick black paint. I think at some point in the near future, I'll clean up the legs as well because that paint's coming off and they're pretty rusty. But it's not high on the list, at least not at the moment. This thing still needs to get cleaned up. But what I am going to do real quick so I can finish cleaning it up is I'm going to change out that lock because uh, I don't have a key. So we'll change out that lock, then we can close the door. I'll check and make sure everything's working. And still at some point I do need to repin this connector because this is a source of problems. But I get, oh, and then we're gonna clean these buttons. Get in there, we'll pop all the buttons out and clean them because they're gross. Now it's time to clean these buttons. These buttons are really gross and they probably have never been cleaned in their entire life. So we're going to take this control panel and drop it down. You're going to need to use an Allen key, uh, 1 8 inch Allen key, I believe, or a bit if it's easier. Let's go ahead and undo these. And then this whole control panel just drops down. It's on a hinge, which is nice. And now you can have access to all of your buttons. And this is how you would service any of the buttons should you need to. So there you go. And then there's something interesting I learned the other day. I didn't know this because I was looking for it. I was looking for a dip switch on this board when I put it in for the cocktail mode. Well, apparently what Atari did, and Atari did this on several games, is they actually put it into the wiring harness to make it known that it's a cocktail. So there's, I guess, an extra wire that gets grounded out that says, hey, you know what, this board is being played in a cocktail versus an upright and there's no dip switch to change for it. It just knows to flip the screen based on the actual wiring harness. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and take out the white buttons because as you guys can see, these white buttons are gross and they need to be cleaned. I'm just gonna go and clean them in the sink. But first we should undo all these buttons. And one thing that may help you to loosen these buttons is to grab a hold of that paddle nut with a pair of pliers and come in and spin it. And once it's being spun, you should be able to do it by hand. Like so. And then your button comes out. And then you can go ahead and clean it. Now, if you want to actually get in deep and clean this, you're going to need to take off this little clip ring here, this little E-ring. You just pull that off with a pair of pliers and the whole button disassembles. I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of these buttons on both sides and take them to the sink and clean them real good. So as I'm going through this, I'm noticing something very interesting. I've got some lease switches all the way through until this button here on the player two side, which is the fire button. And if I come over to the player one side, I've got micro switches on all the buttons, except for the hyperspace button, which shows me that while this is probably original, but this has been replaced at some point in time, although I'm still seeing flathead screws here, so it must have been replaced probably while on location. Um, but I just thought that was interesting. You can figure out what's original and what's not because I'm assuming that these all would have been leaf switches because these are the leaf switch mounts. But that is a micro switch there for all the buttons on player one. But again, when you go back to player two, we still have a lot of the original micro um, leaf switches and then just a micro switch for the fire button, which makes sense because that gets used a lot. Just a little neat little thing that I, I saw while examining this game up close. 
So we've cleaned a bunch of the buttons with uh, soap and water, hot soap and water. And I don't know if you can see this, but this white button is perfect to show what I like to call smoker's patina. While it has been cleaned, you left with this yellowish brown residue and with some marks. You see there's like a little white mark where it rubs every time the button's pressed. Um, well, the nicotine builds up, but it is wiped away. And I will call that smoker's patina because this was probably, this was definitely in a place that had a lot of nicotine in it because when I wiped with paper towels on the side of the cabinet, they were brown. So it's always fun to find. You could replace these with brand new buttons. Uh, I'm not going to, this is kind of a, a refurbished job on the cheap. So we're keeping all the original buttons because they work fine and uh, patina tells a story. But I will install these so that I see less patina than more patina. So I will try to make sure that the lighter patina is facing you versus, you know, the back of the game where you're not going to see it. But, yep. And there's even, like, marks on the top. I took a magic eraser to it, toothbrush and everything else, and... Uh, it just didn't come off, but it's clean. I feel okay touching it now. But yes, patina in the grossest form. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and we'll put these back in. And there are some notches where everything kind of lines up. I think, yeah. And uh, just trying to make sure that the brown part's towards the back, even though this whole thing spins, so. It is what it is. But you just go ahead and you put your leaf switch back on and you power that and uh, you go to the next one. And I'm just going to do these hand tight so I don't need to use pliers the next time I, I need to take them off. There we go. And that's how easy it is to put in a button. I'll go through and continue doing the rest. Well, I've been powering on the game, and I've been hoping to get away with not having to do this, even though I said I was going to have to do this. But this connector right here is just no good. So I'm going to repin it, which means I'm going to take out all 12 of these pins and put new female connectors on and pop out all 12 of these male connectors here and put new male connectors on. I mean, I have to fiddle with it. Sometimes I get no neck glow, sometimes I get no high voltage, sometimes I get half a screen, sometimes the Spock killer comes on, and I know everything here down the board side is working, and this connector is an issue, and it's old, it's tired, so I'm going to go ahead and I'll take care of it. I know that this has uh, seen some corrosion anyway, so it's worth doing because who knows what kind of corrosion is in there. So I know I've done this before, so I'll make it brief. The way you go about doing this is you use your depinning tool, which you used to be able to get a Radio Shack, and you're gonna need some Molex pins, which you could get from a Bob Roberts, but other places have them too. And you're gonna go ahead and put your depinning tool in here. Make sure it goes in all the way, and then you push this little thumb depressor and then this wire comes out and I do one at a time just to make sure that I'll mess anything up okay and I try to keep track of which ones I do okay uh, I am going to verify that this is 093 though because if it's not I need to get some other pins So I've just been screwing around with this monitor, monitor connector. I don't think that those are .093 pins, or they're super worn, but they were slightly smaller, so I didn't pin it. I'm gonna do a little bit more research on it. But what I did is I took a little screwdriver on the female side and went through and pushed every single pin in further so it made a good connection I mean I can see that there's a small gap here but that seemed to do it because what's happening is that I'll get like half a monitor and um, what I mean by half a monitor it's not vertical collapse it's like horizontal collapse so like 
as you're looking at it from the player one side, I'll get right side collapsed or not being drawn. And sometimes I don't get any uh, neck glow or anything else like that. So I know it's a connector issue if I wiggle it around, but I'm gonna repin in. I just gotta do a little bit of research. But right now we have a working Asteroids. It's here, it's working. The buttons are cleaned up. They're installed with their smoker patina. Um, you can see some of it more than others, but hey, you know, it is what it is. This was the $60 Asteroids cocktail table that I bought and I did spend a little bit of money getting the board going but I'm still under the $300 mark for a working game and uh, I already have the can of rattle paint. I will at some point come through I think and remove these legs, sand them, off, sand them down and repaint them black and I still gotta finish cleaning this up. But we are just about done. So I think I'm gonna call it here, as far as this video goes, because it's essentially done and working. I just haven't moved it into the house. We've done a lot to it to get it up and going, but you know, not horrible. Uh, I did manage to buy another board, so that saved me a ton of time. Uh, but yeah, we, we are here. Things to still do uh, is to address this connector. And I, unfortunately, I did, you know, I, I fixed this bottom and it's a lot, it's not falling off now like it was, but it's still not sitting right. So while I did put a new lock in, it doesn't hold it well enough. So I squeezed in a little screw and let me show you where, I didn't actually put any holes on the visible side of things, but there is now a hole right here where the screw goes in. It just happens to go in between you know, the, 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 the door, not the back door, but you know, the door on the co uh, cocktail table um, and this piece here just to hold it in. But I would not say that this is my best effort. I'm still disappointed that I screwed up those Atari logos when I pulled it off. I mean, this is the better one, but that one over here, Man, I can't believe I wore that. Just came right off. I, I don't know. Was I overzealous in my cleaning? I mean, it's not like this thing is uh, crystal clear glass, but it, it was gross. I mean, it had like things grow. I still, I still need to clean it up because it's like I've got like etching and stuff here. Like this has been cleaned, but I can't get it up. I've used uh, denatured alcohol and acetone, I paint, uh, lacquer thinner. I'm gonna try some other stuff, but maybe like a razor blade. We'll see, maybe I won't end the video here. Maybe I'll keep cleaning it and we'll come back and be like, yeah, I gotta clean or, or not. We're just gonna fade to black and see where we end up. So I did a little bit of research because while I left this thing plugged in and working and it was working overnight, it stopped working. So I just unplugged it and plugged it back in and reseated that lousy connection. This is my culprit, as I said before, but they are not .093 pins, they are .084 pins, which I don't have. Need to get some, but they are just slightly smaller than .093. And uh, I'm surprised I don't have any, but they're not super common, so that would be why, but they are more common in this older stuff. So I will get some pins and I will repin it and uh, that way I can be working here for now. <laughs> See, I thought I was gonna be done, but, I, but I'm not. I've also been trying to get some of this stuff up here. I don't know if, you, if I go like this, there's this like stuff etched on the glass and I've been putting some uh, glass cleaner on it and coming in with razor blades, scraping it away and it's gotten a good portion of it off, except now, it's like whatever's left, I feel like it's permanently etched in the glass. So, we'll, I mean, I might just have to call it good. Like, where's the angle? See, it's, it's hard to see. But, it's there. There's a couple other spots here along the edge. But, yeah, there we go. 
All right, now I'll clean it more. All right, I know what you're thinking. Tim finished the video already. But so I had the connector working. I just turned it on and sitting for a couple days and you can see what happens. I get like a, a half collapse. It's not a vertical collapse because that'd be coming down from the bottom. It's like a horizontal collapse, but it's that connector. I'm, I'm like 99% sure it's a connector. I just got a package in the mail today. You know, this is like one long continuous video. And this, video, this package is from Arcade Parts and Repair. Let's open this up. And in here, well, let's go ahead and open it up. So in here, we have, all right, let's see. Got myself an O84 pinning, uh, de-pinning tool there. Got myself a, a cap kit for this monitor. And let's see, uh, this is a, a cap kit to do on uh, another monitor that I'm helping a friend out with, so that's not important. We've also got here, you can see, some O84 Molex pins, female, and let's see, some uh, more male O84 Molex pins. So we can take care of that setup there, and uh, we'll be good. And then I guess I could enter here the uh, Parts and repair, free giveaway, $100. So I guess, let's see, I gotta order and pay within the giveaway month. My minimum order is 25 bucks, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, let's see, leave feedback and review at least one of the products, and then click like it on our site and subscribe. Preferable, but not required. And then they'll do a drawing on the 15th, so maybe I'll win 100 bucks towards that, that site. Let's go ahead and deep pin that now. So here's the connector. That's a problem. We're gonna pull this out like this. And this is, the whole game has seen moisture. Um, at least the board was all corroded. So I'm assuming that this is an issue. And here is that uh, new depending tool we got from Arcade Parts and Repair. Let's go ahead and take that out. We'll give this a whirl and see if this does the job we need it to do. Now when I do these, I only do one pin at a time, take one out. Repin it and put a new one in. So let's try this. Now, let's see, pull that out. Put in. There you go. I feel like, like a click. Let's see. There we go. Push, push it out. There we go. So then we'll clip that and put on a new pin. So we're going to use those male Molex O84 pins that we picked up from Arcade Parts and Repair and. These are the pins, they come on a little strip like this. I do like when they're already separated, so it's just a little bit quicker and easier. Now I've got to go through and break off all these, and this is a 12-pin connector. And I guess what you could do if you didn't have any, you could try it. I don't know if this would work, but I guess you could take some sandpaper and lightly clean up all these pins on the male end, but it wouldn't work on the female end. I'm going to do both set both connectors both male and female because they don't know which side the problem's on so we'll just take care of it and we'll do both sides so i'll go through and we'll just break these off like that wiggle them back and forth until they come off and then we'll go ahead and put our pins on now i'm sure you guys have seen me do this before but we're going to go ahead and we will i'm actually going to clip this little connector back this little zip tie it's gonna make my life easier if it's just not there. And I've already undone this clip in the back just to get more room. We'll put these things back later. All right. So going to clip off the old one. And then we're gonna go ahead and we'll strip back the wire. You don't need to strip it back very far at all. You're just gonna strip it back. Ooh, a few millimeters really. A4, five millimeters. Maybe a little more than that. Not much though. Oh, this wire is old and brittle. It's the rubber insulation around it. It's not getting, there we go. It's a little bit more than I'd like, but we should be okay with that. I'm gonna go ahead and Take a pin 
here are the pins. And the way I like to do this to make sure I get a good connection is when I'm using my uh, crimping tool here, All right, so you guys can see it. I like to start with the B side first, and what you do is you're gonna I'm gonna put the pin in, and what happens is is it goes through and it curls over the wire. So I'm going to be putting it in on the closest one. So as far as A and B goes, A is the outside, B is the inside, closest to the pin that actually makes the connection. Put that in there lightly, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and we'll put the wire in. We have to make sure that we have the bigger part of the wire being able to crimp around the insulation. And the reason I do B first is because I like to then give it a little light tug just to make sure that it's actually making a connection with the metal wire versus just the insulation. Then I come back and I do this with the larger wire, the A side. Then we'll come back and we'll put it in right where we left off. So you just want to make sure you remember where you're starting. There we go, and that new one is in. You can kind of tell because that's nice and shiny. The other ones are getting pretty dark. And so I'm just going to start here and go through and do all of them. And then I'm going to do go through and do the female side. And uh, that's how you repin a connector. So I've got 12 to do here, 12 to do there, and we'll turn it back on when it's all done. So I've gone ahead while the battery is charging on the camera, repinned everything here, repinned everything here. Then I plugged it in and I still had the same issue with that half monitor issue. And I was like, what the heck? So I think my next thing that I'm going to do, well, I went through and I reseated every single one of these wires here coming from this connector. And that seemed, I think we'll do the trick, but we'll tr test it again. So basically I just came in here, took each one off, and then put it back on, you know, got a better connection, maybe, get it back on, there we go. There's even a couple back here. You know, make sure you do those. And then, do all these other connectors here, just to make sure everything was good. Now we'll go ahead and plug it in. And it does go in, it's a much tighter fit now too, which is what we want. So let's, uh, Turn it on and see what happens. Anything? Oh, it did it again. It's got that half. All right, I'm gonna go re reseat everything, see if I can figure out which one it is. This is annoying me. It's like, I'll get it and then it'll go. Shouldn't have half an image like that. I think I found it. Spot killer's not on, but it should be. When I come in here and I push on the board in this area, the monitor, the image comes back in and out. I've got a cold solder joint in here somewhere. So I'm pushing right here. And it's coming in and out. Just trying to do this. See? There it goes. It's right in there. All right, cold solder joint, easy fix. So I've opened up the top. You know, I keep saying this video is gonna be done, but it will be soon because you know, all the buttons have been cleaned and everything else is just about there. I'm gonna pull the monitor out. What's kind of busted over here? So I've got one, two, three screws I'm going to undo. I, there was only one. Now I've got three in, which is better. So I'll pull that out, pull that deflection board out, reflow the solder on that. We've done the high voltage cage. Now we'll do the deflection board. So we've put the monitor on the bench. Got my beer ready. It's a New England style IPA from Oakham Brewing in Brookfield, Massachusetts. So there it is, it's the Galaxy Farm. And uh, we've got a little bit left in the can, but that's what it looks like. Anyway, that's not important. What is important is I've got a cold solder joint and we have determined it is like in this area here. 
I might just cap it right now. I did pick up the caps, so we'll probably go ahead and cap it. it says this is for the GO5802 slash 805. And if we look here on the side of this monitor, it's the GO5805. So we are, we are good. So I might just do the ones on the deflection board. I have a discharge tool to remove the anode cup, but I, that's more for rasters. I think you should be using a different high voltage probe for these. So I'm leaving this intact. I'm just going to disconnect everything. So what I have disconnected so far, I'm leaving this connector and all the wires attached. I'm removing um, all of these other connectors down here, which I know it's hard to see, but there are one, two, three, four, I'm sorry, three, four, four connectors here. Um, yes, Tim, point the camera in the right direction. So I'm gonna remove this, and then I'll probably do the caps and reflow all the headers like I showed you before on the high voltage gauge. This video is getting longer and longer by the minute, and I keep saying it's done, but we will get there, I promise. So here is the list of parts, and they show, tell us the location for the deflection PCB, which is what we are looking at here. And then we have the high voltage PCB, which is what we reflowed earlier. I did not have the cap kit at the time I did this, because in my mind I was gonna do this whole video in like a day and be like, ah, this game's up and running. But that is not the case. So anyway, here are the caps. I will do the high voltage cage, but not right now. I need to make sure I get a pro the proper high voltage probe to discharge that thing. And uh, or put a resistor in line so that it dissipates slowly. And then I'll do the high voltage cage so that I can actually take it out and remove it and do it the right way versus kind of leaving things connected. That's just gonna be a pain. But we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna do the deflection PCB. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven caps to do. So here we go, this is the list of caps. The, you know, and arcade parts and repair goes through and they show you everything that you've got to do with some of the basic instructions. And uh, yeah, so let's, we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm not gonna film this. It's, you guys have seen me do a cap kit before. Uh, maybe not recently, but you guys get the idea. I will do like a cap. And as far as what I use, I'm not using anything fancy. I'm using a, a Weller, which is like a medium duty. But I do like it because it has lights on it, so that way you know it's on and you know when you'll burn yourself. It also helps you see in dark locations. Like that's the one I take with me when I'm helping out at free play and it just helps me in dark areas because there's lights already on it. It's perfect for that job. And then I use a, uh, a solder bolt and not a fancy hacko. I do have a Radio Shack desoldering iron with a bulb that does work, but if you turn it on, you better go like make yourself a five course meal before, and eat it before you come back and use it because it takes so long to heat up. This only takes a few minutes to heat up and is great for being on location and small and whatever else. But that's what we're gonna use to do this. So uh, go ahead and get started now. So part of the reason I'm capping it is because on the deflection board, as far as capacitors that we're replacing, we're not doing the two big, I believe these are filter caps, but you can't see off the screen here. These are filter caps, boom. These two big ones, one, two. Um, the reason we're doing this is because the caps that we are replacing, there's only seven of them. So we're just gonna do it. And in fact, six of them are the same. So what I do like to do is I like to go through, especially on a board that's this simple, is we'll go through and just kind of check our locations. We've got to go uh, C500, which I know you guys can't see. Let's see, let me hold this up. So we're gonna go C500. So 500, 501, 502, 503, 504. Then we have to do 603 and 703. So we'll go through, we'll locate those. I like to just check orientation if I can see them. If not, I do it when I pull it because I think what I might do is pull every cap that's the same all at once and then I'll go through and I'll solder those and then I'll pull the ones that are different out. Normally what I do is I do one cap at a time and I check it off. Another cap at a time, check it off. Especially on these, you know, some of the more complicated ones like a Wells Gardner, like Geo 7 or something like that. So let's see, I'm gonna find 500. So here's, let's see, there's C500. And then we've gotta go to 501, which is right here. We go 502. 503, and we need to do, let's see, do I need to do 504? I do need to find 504. I found 504. C504 is this big one here. I can't see the label, but I thought I saw C505, which is, 
that cap over there, but this is 504 here. And it is the one that is the same value, so 47 microfarads, which is what it says it is. 160 volts, and the one we are supplied with is 250 volts, so the voltage can be higher, uh, but we don't change the microfarad value. We also don't want to go lower on the voltage either, so higher voltage is fine, but we want the same microfarad value. And then we got to do 603 and 703. I wonder if they're on here. So then as far as 603 and 703 go, here's 603, so we don't need it. And here's 703, kind of right in the back there. So that's 703, they're not populated. Because remember, this is the 802 and 805 kit, and that must be populated on the other one, which we, so we're not going to do that. So I actually have, instead of seven caps, five caps to do. So let's go ahead and we'll do that. And because I'm la too lazy to turn this thing over, it is actually marked on the back for 504 right there. <laughs> Had I turned it over, I would have found this much quicker. So I'm going to start with the big cap. Just get it out of the way because all the rest are the same. So I use my solder pult. It's like a, a pump action. Come in. I'll heat this up. And you can see the solder flow. And I think I just heard the cap fall out. Yep, there it goes, I heard it fall. Sometimes that happens. Then you may need to come in. Well, that one's actually pretty clean. Sometimes you need to go back and do that more than once. But that's the idea. Remove and replace. So let me grab that other cap and put it in. So here's our cap. That we're gonna, we also like to check the values. This is the one that fell out. So again, 160 volts, 47 microfarads. The 47 is the key, 47 microfarads. 250 volts and we come in here and check it on our list that's what it says so that's the correct location I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out of the tape and they put them in this tape sometimes I remove these things right away and knock the camera over do you like that and then uh, go ahead so uh, let's see we insert the Long lead into the positive side. Okay, let me see if I can show you. You guys see that? All right. Long lead into the positive side, and it is marked positive here. There's a little plus sign there. And the short leg ha always has the stripe on it, so you can double check. I'll put that in. I come over, and I just let's see. Can you see it? There it is. Fold over my wires like that, and I'll come in and I'll solder it. Some people will remove all the caps, put in all the caps, and solder everything at once. It's very efficient. If you're an amateur like myself, I suggest doing one at a time or in small groups. Now, as far as soldering goes, I know a lot of you guys know how to solder and you're very good at it. The key is to make sure that you heat up the part and the pad, and the pad is that silver area around where the part pokes through, the through holes there. And to make sure, you know, you, you let the solder kind of melt into place. You don't want to do it too long. People can remove traces or lift the pad, but generally it only takes, you know, a few seconds depending on your soldering iron. I think this one I usually heat for like somewhere in the vicinity of five to 10 seconds, both parts at the same time. And then I just kind of touch the thing to it, the solder to it. Let's sit there for a second and come on up. I'll come over, do the same thing on the other side. Let's sit there for a second. You can watch it kind of soak in and you're good. That's it. And then we just go through and rinse and repeat for the rest of the capacitors. I will clip my leads at the very end. So I've gone ahead and I put all the caps in. I have not soldered them. What I'm going to do real quick is check everything before I solder these. Remember, stripe side is negative and we should be seeing the positive on the opposite side, which we are. Stripe side is negative, positive on the other side. The positive is also the long lead too when you're doing this. So I could also check from the back side and say, oh yes, I see I have my long lead and then my short lead. 
if I come and look at this, we've got our positive sign where our long lead is, and the negative is on the side. Okay, that's one way to go through and kind of quickly check to make sure everything's good. I'm gonna go through and check these. So I've got positive is the long here, yes. And then on this one over here, I have positive, which is the long, and that is marked correctly. I know it's hard to see on camera, but we're going through and we're double checking as you should too. And we don't need to do those other two caps because they don't exist on this board. So now we just come in and we solder everything. And then I'm also gonna go through and reflow a ton of stuff on this board. I'm gonna try to do everything. Just take the soldering iron and touch it and I'll put new solder on where all the headers are because we want this to not, when we flex it, to you know lose uh, the signal, the video signal there. Because remember, we get half an image or we get you no know, image until we push on the board. So I'm gonna go through and I'll solder all this off camera and we'll come back when it's all done. So what did I do? I did not reflow everything but I did come in and I reflowed this section here, a lot of stuff in, because when we flipped it over, this is the area where I was pushing in here and I was finding that things were, you know, coming on and off. So uh, actually I should probably come down here and do a little bit more, but the key things that I reflowed were all of these plugs here some of them had a little tiny pinholes in there that at first glance you might not see. So I did reflow all of these and all the way around. I did all the headers as well. All the caps are in. We're going to go ahead. We're going to put it back together. Oh, I also reflowed the uh, fuse holders as well. And uh, we're going to go ahead and we'll, we'll put it back together and try now. So we've reflowed tons of stuff in this section here fuse holders, all those little connector plugs along the way because when we pushed on this, when it flexed, it would come in and out. So that has me convinced that it's just a cold solder joint somewhere and we did see a little tiny pinhole, I didn't show them, but there were little tiny pinholes in those plugs that probably over time were not helping. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and we gotta finish plugging this in. I've gone ahead and I've screwed everything in. So we'll go ahead and I refloat these headers too. That's good, and I know it's kind of hard to see down here, but too bad. And uh, yeah, it's hard for you to see, it's hard for me to see. I just want to make sure I'm not off a pin when I do this. You know, other things that we could do is, you know, we may need to repin these connectors for the monitor going into the deflection board at some point, and we've all of that so that way everything's nice and connected. Come on, Tim. There's a filter cap in it. There we go. Give it a little quick little tug. Everything's good. All right, we'll go ahead and we'll pop that back into the cabinet. I'm not going to screw it in yet, but we'll see what needs to happen. Hopefully, nothing. We've put the monitor in. Now it's time to reconnect everything. We've repinned, we've reflowed, we've put the caps on the deflection board, we've done a whole bunch of stuff. <sighs> Will it work successfully? Feel good. Feel like it might or not because that's just my luck. But I'm gonna go with it's going to work. I actually haven't tested it. Normally I test things before I show them on camera so I don't look like an idiot. So here's your chance. Tim's gonna look like an idiot. Uh, here we go. I'm keeping the camera here in case something explodes. Mm. All right. Do I have neck glow yet? I do have neck glow. Let's come up and wait. A mother. F ah, what is it? Why is it doing that? You know, I felt so confident. Ah. Something's failing. What's failing? Well, I'm going to push on the board. We're going to see what happens. Because I've reflowed a ton of stuff and we've done new caps. Let's see. Nothing. Well, what the heck? All right.
right. You know how I still felt confident? Yeah, I lied. All right. Back to the drawing board. I found the pin, the plug. So we got it back. I was pushing in the area. Let me see if I can... Hold on. I'm like trying to do this without... Um... Yeah, I'm kind of in a precarious position right now holding this camera. All right, let's see if I can remember where it is. It is this yellow wire right here that when I bent it, it all came back. I know you guys can't, oh, maybe if, yeah, there we go. This yellow wire right here was causing it. I reflowed that. Maybe I'll repin that or clean it. That was it. I'm actually, I'm gonna try something. I'll probably break the monitor. I'm gonna unplug it, that wire, and uh, turn it back on and see what happens. So I'm gonna shut it off. Let me unplug it and see what happens. So it's this yellow wire here. Oh, I can't even get it off. All right, let me come back. So I unplugged that wire, turned it back on, and nothing changed. They still had a full screen image. I've let it sit for a few minutes. Not quite sure where that cold solder joint is. It is somewhere in this area. Couldn't tell you where. I thought I reflowed almost everything, but apparently not. So this uh, problem is brought to you by the next beer. And the next beer is the uh, Cricket Post here, also from the Oak Home Brewing Company out of Brookfield, Massachusetts. Stopped there not too long ago and picked up some beers, so we're going to move on to this next one, which is another New England-style IPA to get us through this problem. And if it comes on and it works, I'm going to open this beer. And if it comes on... And it doesn't work, I'm still gonna drink this beer. But uh, let's turn it on first and see what happens. So I've left this connect disconnected. Uh, I don't know why. You know, superstition, I suppose. Let's go ahead and reconnect it. And hope, I don't know. I still convinced it's somewhere. There's definitely a bad connection somewhere. I can't figure out where. I know it's on the monitor side, but let's turn it on and see what comes up. And it's, we've got a full image. I'm going to need to keep an eye on it. You know, I even let this sit because I thought maybe it was getting warm and things were moving. Um, and that didn't seem to be the case. Because I had to go empty the uh, memory card on this camera. And that took a little while. And then I had to think about what beer I was going to get. So anyway, let's open that beer. So there's an old punch-out sticker on the wall from, that I pulled off a cabinet I was redoing for somebody. Let's go ahead. And uh, I, think, I think we deserve this. So we're going to... This is my Amherst Brewing Glass from the hangar over in Massachusetts here, which cannot turn on the arcade games due to the corona. But there you go, that's what the beer looks like. We're gonna have that. Cheers, guys. I'm gonna go let this game run, clean up the cabinet, and we're gonna call it done. Regardless, this video's too long. The game's still on. I'm just gonna do some more cleaning on here and we're gonna call this uh good by good i mean i'm done and i will revisit the monitor when it decides to not work i will check it again tomorrow and uh we'll see what happens you guys can ask me in the comments but first let's take this piece of, well, why is there this tape here like this is a random piece of tape like yeah we know some kid probably put some tape on here 
Maybe they put an out of order sign on the side, who knows. There you go. That tape is off. And uh, we'll clean this, we're gonna spray this in, I need to get some purple power. Here, that's the stuff. And let's do it. I'll just keep cleaning this. Because it's dirty. And uh, I'm gonna do that for a while. I'll just sit here and drink my beer that I just poured. We've got some paint nicks here. Oh, look at that, they just come off with your fingernail. There's little white specks here. That's good. Somebody must have like been painting somewhere. This was there. Nobody cared. But we'll keep going and I get this cleaned up and I'm gonna ask my wife where I can put it. I think she'll let me put it in the living room. I mean, you guys know I'm out of room. So as you watch me clean, nobody likes watching anybody clean. They just listen to this lousy banter that's happening. I'm cleaning this groove here. This has probably got 40 years of dust because let's be serious, nobody cleans this groove. Uh, yeah, I'd say so. Oh, you can't even see the groove. It's not even camera, Tim. See, there's a groove here. I was cleaning it. But, yeah. I mean, here's my beer. This is the more important part. But, all right, I'm gonna keep scrubbing and then we'll, we'll do a once over shot here and we're gonna call it done. All right, so here's the $60 pour score. Doesn't it look great in the dark? <laughs> anyway, the monitor didn't die on me. Well, not die, but you know, half a, an image here while I was cleaning it. I've turned it on and off a couple of times, so I'm gonna let it sit overnight. And then you guys can just ask me in the comments, say, hey, Tim, did it come back? Did it die? I'll be like, yeah, it probably died. But um, there we go, there's the scores, not good scores. And uh, if you see the letter A there, that'd be my, my youngest one who uh, can't, you know, he hasn't even gone into preschool yet. You know, randomly shooting in circles and pushing all the buttons at the same time. That's, that's the score you get. So if you get 1,700 points and you're trying, just know that a three-year-old beats you regularly. And if you beat 7,000 points, which you probably can all do, you're better than me, but I'm not very good at this game. I don't, I never played this one too much, but I liked it. So now I get to spend some time on it. But here it is, it's working. I'll turn the lights on now so we can see it. And uh, then we're done. So here it is, tape's been removed, the gum's been removed. Uh, there was tape on this side door and paint and stuff and then let's see there was paint go I'm not paint yeah there was actually a little bit of paint splatter here and that tape's been removed and I think at some point I will like redo the legs and clean those up but this is a you know quick refurb get it up and running because it, it was a like a, a $60 pour score here so and there's the other side and I do need to I spent a little bit more time with this front door and get it to latch because while well, I did glue and clamp everything I don't know it sagged it didn't hold it's not the way I like it but it you know it's going and if I were an operator I'd be done but I'm not but it's done for the video we're not going to revisit this I mean and according to the video this only took like two hours to do so that's pretty good but this took me maybe yeah, a few days all in all, like total time, few hours here and there. As far as total cost invested into this poor score. Um, so we've got the game, it's 60 bucks. And then there's the board. So board prices, it all depends on where you're getting yours from. Let's average it out to about, let's call it $200 and we have to include things like shipping. So, let's, so we're now at 260 bucks. That's not bad. And then I needed to buy those pins, and I bought a de-pinning tool, which the de-pinning tool wasn't cheap. So that was 20 bucks, I think. And you can reuse it, so do you, do you include it? If you do, we're up to 280, plus the pins and the cap kit. So the pins, I probably needed, let's see, 
uh, 12 pins, so you actually had to probably buy at least 20 pins if you're buying them, you know, 10 at a time. So that's, you know, let's call it $5 for pins. So 25, so we're now at like 25, that's with a deep pinning tool, so we're now at 285, plus I bought that cat kit, which I think was like six or seven bucks. So we're at like 292. $292, and we're not including the paper towels we used, or the cleaner. So we're under $300 all said and done to get this poor score up and running. I didn't buy any new parts other than the caps and the pins. So, you know, if I had a little bit more know-how, I could have saved a ton of money by just trying to fix the old asteroids board, but I don't have that ability or know-how, nor did I really feel like doing it. I just wanted to drop in that, oh, you know what I did buy and I forgot about? I bought that high score saves kit. But you don't need to buy that, so that's 60 bucks. So yeah, we're over $300 now. We're now at like 355-ish. So, so $355 with the high score save kit. All said and done to get this thing going and we're still eyeballing that monitor and giving it the stink eye and then having a beer. But that's it guys. Thanks again for watching. This is the dirty pickup, 60 bucks, poor score, all said and done with a high score save and operating today, maybe not tomorrow, for approximately 355 bucks with a high score save. Gotta, gotta reiterate that you don't need that. So you're under $300 if you don't do that. But uh, cheers guys. And uh, thanks again for watching. And um, you know, if you don't like this stuff, don't click like and don't click subscribe just ignore it all right guys thanks again and as always if you have any questions please feel free to ask and um i'll see you guys in the next video but wait you came back for more after the fade to black that's because we're gonna play a game and not be very good can i beat my own high score yeah probably not I can't believe I'm not hitting anything. Come on, Tim. Don't have beer and fly a spaceship. That took long enough. Oh, look out. There's an asteroid there. Whoa! Oh, Tim, you should move. No! Wait, oh, I, did I not get hit? Oh no, I, I think I did. That's game over. That's not a good score. No, I should not put my name in. We should put in a name in like... Mm, we've already done... Well, we'll do... Uh, uh, how about just no? Because that's not a good score. Everybody should know that, uh, that it's not what you want. No. Just no. All right, guys. Thanks again for watching.